Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas, to our midweek Bible study. We're so glad that you're taking this opportunity to join with us. And we trust and pray as we look into the Word of God that we'll come to the saving knowledge if we've not been saved, that we'll come to the knowledge of walking in the fellowship of God if we're having difficulty, or we'll find encouragement no matter how difficult it gets, we have that assurance that he will never leave nor forsake us. But I want you, if you have your Bible or can reach it, I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll begin in verse 1 in just a moment. But I want to preface it with this. I'm amazed when people are constantly, not every day, but quite often find people who say that the Bible's antiquated, it's outdated, it has no significance in the world in which we live today. But you know, the Bible affirms to us that it's a living book. It's the very word of God. The Bible said it's more powerful than a two-edged sword. And so, as the power of God. And what I want us to do, I want us to look today to show you that the Bible is never outdated, no matter how long. And the Apostle Paul states in this particular chapter of 2 Timothy what society will be like just before the coming of Christ. And it could not be any greater proof that the Bible is alive. It's the very word of God, given by inspiration of God. Holy men, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, it's breathed from the very breath of God. But I want us to notice what Paul says here in 2 Timothy Chapter 3 and verses 1 through 9. Now he sets the stage of how this society will come to pass. And if we'll pay attention, we'll see that it is the society of 2022. First of all, let us pray. Father, bless the message this evening. Help us to see that the word of God is your very breath, is the very words of God. It's never antiquated. It's never outdated because it's a living word. It's the true word of God, which cannot be added to, cannot be taken away. While it may be denied, it cannot be destroyed. Help us to see that some 2,000 years ago, the apostle Paul is able to picture society as it grows close to the coming of Christ. And I want us to look at it in reference to 2022. Bless now and we'll praise you in Christ's name. First of all, look at the scene to see if it's not the same scene of today in verse 1. This note, I want you to... Have the knowledge, and I want you to understand the knowledge that's going to be prevailing in light of the rapture taking place and Christ coming again to judge this world. Look at it. He said very plainly, this know also, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, the word of God lets us know exactly what condition the world is in before he gives us the identifying society that will be in place just before this takes place. Not setting the date, 
The Bible said very plainly in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But he also reminded us in Luke chapter 21 in verse 28. When these things begin to come to pass. When they have a beginning. When they have a beginning. When these things have a beginning. Then you can expect to see the results that are coming to pass. Coming to pass. Look at it. Then look up. The admonishment is to look up. Why? Because it's about time for Christ to rapture out the church, the tribulation to start, and then at the end of seven year tribulation for him to come and execute his judgment upon this world just before he sets his millennial kingdom into place. We cannot set dates, but we must interpret Scripture according to the information that God gives us in His Word. He said, you will know that these things are about to come to pass. When it says it means come to pass, it means it begins. It don't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, next day, could. What it means coming to pass is it has begun. And then it will realm up. It will get faster and faster as time grows short. Think about it. Think about it. Notice the last days are described as perilous times in verse 1. So, how do we know that we're near the end? We look to the signs of the time. In the passage, we learn that the last days will be perilous times. Now, I want us to define the word perilous. It comes from a word that means violent, dangerous, or savage. Hello, hello, society. Let me give you that definition again. It means violent, dangerous, or savage. Is that not available today? Does that not further begin to vindicate that the Word of God is true? That's a living Word. It's never antiquated. It's never outdated. It's as current as the generation to which it's being shared with. It's current with the generation it's being shared with has been all the way from Genesis and it will be all the way to Revelation. And that word perilous is identifying the modern day generation. Those three, three identities will affirm to us that it is true. Paul said, it'll be perilous times. Have you watched the news? Have you paid any attention to what's taking place? Unnecessary violence. It's a dangerous time. And it's a savage time. Humanity is assaulting and murdering each other in ways never thought to be even imagined. Look at it. It's only the other usage in the New Testament is in Matthew 8, 28. Where the demon-possessed men are described as exceedingly fierce. Look at verse 28 in Matthew chapter 8. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils or demons. You see, when God is rejected, then Satan has the advantage. When society turns from God, it gives liberty to Satan. When Society willfully 
rejects the grace of God and the will of God, then Satan has a control to intercede. Think about that. Coming out of the tombs. And here we go. Here's the meaning in the scripture concerning that violent, dangerous, and savage or perilous, exceedingly fierce, feroce, or furious, so that no man might pass that by that way. Fierce. Fierce. Think about it. Is that not a picture of what's taking place? Evil has been with us in every generation. But the standards of morality and decency in the last days is evident is ignored more and more as time goes on when there's no respect for human life. Think about that. Think about that. The Bible tells us that very plainly. Now let's look at society. Because of this perilous times, first of all, Paul begins to identify people who have lack of character. Look at verse 2 and 3. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Think about that. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Think about that. People will be lovers of themselves. Now you listen to me and see if you don't agree. Never in the history has our society been so motivated by self-gratification. It's all about self, self, self. Me first has become a American way of life. What's sin in it for me? Whether it's work, play, or even worship. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? He said people will be lovers of money. Think about that. Think about that. They refuse to deny self anything has already brought an enormous debt. Do you know Americans that are dead can never pay? And you know it's proven more families are in debt so far they can't even keep up with the interest because it's I deserve it. I need it. There's no waiting for it. There's no saving for it. There's no making adjustments to, to secure this in different processes of time. I got to have it now, right now. Bones to me. I deserve it. You ever watch the commercials? Go get what you deserve. You know what you deserve, ladies and gentlemen? Doing what's right. Think about it. The reason they have overextended themselves with things. He goes on and the so people would be boasters, proud and blasphemers. I don't need God. I don't need, need God. I don't need anyone. They're self-made and arrogant. The people are described as disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Now I know you're not going to like what I say. But I will like in my family and the genealogy somewhere. There's not a single family that doesn't have domestic problems. Mates, family, children against parents, parents against children, children against children. Why? Except the Lord build the house, they labor, labor in vain. Psalms 127 verse 1. Think about it. You see, people are described as disobedient to parents and unthankful. Isn't it amazing that Paul could see into what the world would become? Why? Because God's Bible is inspired. 
The Lord revealed to him a future time when the family unit would be broken down. He certainly could be writing about the conditions of our young people today. Children are so bombarded with philosophy of the world that our church is on the front line of this battle. Think about it. Think about it. The Bible tells us very plainly. Then he goes on to say, traitors, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort they are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laid with sin, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do they also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested into all men, as theirs also was. Think about that. People are unholy or profane. You cannot watch TV very seldom without hearing explicit profanity. We aren't visiting Mayberry anymore. Even cartoons are vile like The Simpsons and South Park. Beyond profane language or the profane subject matters addressed as normal. Sexual promiscuity. All kinds of vile moral decrepancy. Look at it. People are unloving, unforgiving, and slanders. You know our court system is clogged with frivolous litigations. It appears that some people are just waiting for the right suit to come. So I can become a millionaire. Think about that. There's very few, now listen to me, there's very few accidents now. You see, accidents were where both people accepted it. But now most so-called accidents is usually for just one party to become well-to-do. Oh, think about that. Think about that. Class action suits are being filed on everything from tobacco to McDonald's. It was some time back when a hot cup of coffee was spilt on a person that brought them superior gain financially. Oh, listen to me. Neighbors sue one another over where the leaves drop. How frivolous. How frivolous. The Bible said gains got by illegal or immoral means will do nothing but bring you further misery. Let me tell you something. Notice that. People refuse self-control. They're brutal, despisers of good. Well, I'll tell you something today. People are in the minority and under attack who try to maintain a moral platform. Not a self-righteous, pharisaic life. They're just trying to live in a moral, pure foundation. They're ostracized. They're condemned. They're, they're vandalized with gossip, slander. Why? Because there's an old saying, and it's true. If I'm unhappy, then you can't be happy. And those that are really unhappy, because those that have followed this lifestyle, have no peace. Let me say something to you before I continue the message. Happiness does not come from without. Happiness has to come from within. If you'll stop for just a moment and look at some of the most successful lives. Gained all kind of notoriety and wealth. Come to the end where they find no hope. And many times take their life. Oh how sad that is. Oh how sad that is. You see listen to me. There's no condition. There's no condition you can ever get into. That there can't be help for if you'll accept it. Because Jesus can help you. 
Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me today. This is probably one of the most unhappy generations I've ever seen. Because people are trying to buy happiness and you can't. People are trying to sin to find a happiness and you can't. The only happiness, the only happiness that you can have is in Jesus Christ. Paul teaches that in his epistle of Philippians. I know how to abound, but I know how to be abased. He said, I know how to have it all or to have nothing. But I'm content. What? And Paul's in prison waiting to have his head cut off. What is wrong with Paul? What is wrong with Paul? Here he is, having lost all the worldly goods, fixed to be condemned and executed, and he said, I'm content. Why? Because he finally realized, ladies and gentlemen, contentment only comes when our heart is right with God. When circumstances do not destroy us, but we turn our life over to Christ, that whatever state I'm in, he's never going to leave me nor forsake me. It brings me a contentment that you can't buy, you can't beg, you can't borrow, and you can't steal. Christ said, I give a peace that only I can give. And ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, think about it. Oh, how unloving, unforgiving. Think about it. People refuse self-control. They're brutal despisers of good. Instead of lifting up what is pure and good, our culture uplifts what is filthy and wicked. Filthy and wicked. Decency is almost a word that's unheard. Look at the heroes, heroes that are placed before our children. People that have no life, no model of life of modesty, and morality, and honesty. Those that are vile are lifted up as heroes. People have no conviction according to verse 4 and 5. People are traitors, headstrong, haughty, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You would think that people would flock to worship God. Especially after the pandemic we've been going through for the last two years. Think about everything since 9-11. How our society began to turn and it's got worse and worse and worse. It looks like. And I can remember right after 9-11. For about 45 days the churches were filled. And then they returned to half empty or empty. Oh, listen. You see, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power of them. They're kind of like Pharaoh. They don't want circumstances to change. They just want consequences not to be there. He didn't want nothing changed. All he wanted was Moses to tell God, get the consequence off of me. And soon as God in his mercy did, he went right back to where he was even worse. Think about it. Think about it. There are many who profess to be religious but deny God's power. They deny his creation, his word, his son, his coming, his salvation. And then verses 6 through 9, people will have no conscience. Paul talks about these false religionists who creep into households. One common strategy of the cult is to speak first to the woman of the house. God established the man to lead the family, especially in spiritual matters. The seed people are always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So it is with the deceivers of today. They may mimic and counterfeit the work of God, but they're limited to how far they can go. We're here today, ladies and gentlemen. What should be our response as we read and consider these verses? Realize that our time is short. What we do for Christ must be done today. We cannot sit back and think we have plenty of time. We're living in perilous times. People are bound in sin and we have the key, Jesus. Paul challenges us not to be unwise, but understanding the times. 
taking full advantage and do all we can to see others brought to a saving knowledge of Christ. We can see the condition of our society. We can see the need of those around us. But what are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? Paul admonishes Timothy with regard to the last days, but also with regard to Timothy, a responsibility to live godly in the midst of a darkened world. We must be the light. We must shine that others might see our good works and glorify our God. What do others see when they look at us? Huh? Bunch of self-righteous, legalistic hypocrites? Or do they see somebody that Christ has touched? And that compassion that was shown to them, they want to share with those. That forgiveness that God gave us, we want to give to them. That love that God had for us, we want to extend to them in the name of Jesus. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the time is short. The time is short. And today is the day of salvation. If you're not saved you need to get saved and ladies and gentlemen nothing's going to change till God's people till God's people get their heart on fire for the love of God to be shared with other people and we go out and in love tell them Jesus loves them Jesus loves them you know most of what's going on today was because society was rejected and not taught love, and not taught forgiveness. I'm talking about society as a whole, not everybody. Oh, how many people I run to in the counseling ministry that when they really come to it, it's because they feel rejected and they feel not even loved sometimes by their own parents. Not loved, but just used, just used. People are so angry today. And here's their philosophy. Society at large. I'm tired of being used. So I'm going to turn it around the way. And I'm going to start using everybody I can. And that'll be two wrecked lives. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Ask him to crucify self. And walk in the love of Jesus. And tell people. You might have been rejected. You might have been abused. But I've got somebody who will never reject you and never abuse you. His name's Jesus. Will you accept him? Father, I know the nature of the message. But it's so true today. It's so true today. We have a world that has the sense, and rightly so, they have been. They have been. The church has failed. The church has failed. We've got to assume that responsibility. Oh, listen, listen. Sinners don't like to come to church because they feel they're rejected before they ever get here. God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. They need to look it up. They said, the church is where I need to go because I can find Christ there. I can find Christ there. Oh, help us, help us, Lord. This society, is perishing because they say nobody loves me nobody cares for me I'm a nothing but we need to tell them you are a something with Jesus and we want you to come and trust him for we ask it in Jesus name amen <laughs>